Welcome to Vango Notes for Human Resource Management, 11th edition, by Gary Dessler. Chapter 7, Interviewing Candidates. Section 1, Big Ideas. Have you ever blurted out an answer to an interview question and then wished you could take it back? If so, you're certainly not alone. In fact, CareerBuilder.com recently conducted a survey of more than 400 hiring managers, asking them to share the most memorable blunders that caused them to reject a particular candidate. Gaffes in job interviews score high on the list. For example, one manager reported that a job candidate asked him to speed up the interview because he had a lunch date. Another said an applicant told him the only reason he was there was that his mother wanted him to get a job, and he was 37 years old. And believe it or not, one candidate didn't wear shoes to the interview. Yet, despite all the possible flaws, the selection interview still remains perhaps the most important screening tool. Let's try to discover why. An interview is a procedure designed to obtain information from a person through oral responses to oral inquiries. Specifically, a selection interview is a selection procedure designed to predict future job performance on the basis of applicants' oral responses to oral inquiries. We can classify selection interviews according to how structured they are, their content, or the types of questions they contain, and how the firm administers the interviews. Let's look at these. First, selection interviews can be either structured or unstructured. The unstructured or non-directive interview generally follows no set format. This lack of structure allows the interviewer to ask follow-up questions and pursue points of interest as they develop. As a result, interviewees for the same job may or may not be asked the same or similar questions. A few questions might be specified in advance, but they're usually not, and there is seldom a formal guide for scoring answers. This type of interview is actually little more than a general conversation. On the other hand, in structured or directive interviews, the questions and acceptable responses are specified in advance, and the responses are often rated for appropriateness. So all interviewees will be asked the same or similar questions. For example, in some beauty pageants, contestants are placed in a soundproof booth, while other contestants are all asked the same question. Structured and non-structured interviews each have pros and cons. In structured interviews, all interviewers ask all applicants the same questions, which makes these interviews more reliable and valid. Structured interviews can also help those who may be less comfortable doing interviews to conduct better ones. Standardizing the administration of the interview also increases consistency across candidates, enhances job relatedness, reduces overall bias, and may enhance the employer's ability to withstand legal challenge. On the other hand, structured interviews don't always provide enough flexibility for the interviewer to pursue a unique line of questioning geared specifically for each candidate. Besides structure, we can also classify interviews based on the content or the types of questions they contain. For example, in a situational interview, you ask the candidate what his behavior would be in a given situation. You might ask a supervisory candidate how he would act in response to a subordinate coming to work late three days in a row. Often, the best interviews are both structured and situational. In a structured situational interview, you might evaluate the applicant on, say, his choice between letting the persistently late subordinate off with a warning and suspending the subordinate for a week. In addition to focusing on present or future situations, interviews can also look at past behaviors. Behavioral interviews ask interviewees to describe how they've reacted to actual situations in the past. Situational questions start with phrases such as, Suppose you were faced with the following situation. What would you do? Behavioral questions instead ask, Can you think of a time when? What did you do? Behavioral and situational interviews can both produce a lot of tension because they ask interviewees to reflect on past behaviors or to predict future behaviors. Another option is to let the interview focus on job-related content. In a job-related interview, the interviewer tries to deduce what the applicant's on-the-job performance will be based on her answers to questions about relative past experiences. The questions here don't revolve around hypothetical or actual situations or scenarios. 
Instead, the interviewer asks specific job-related questions, such as, Which courses did you like best in business school? The purpose is to draw conclusions about the candidate's ability to handle particular aspects of the job to be filled. For instance, an applicant who has taken a human resource management course should have applicable human resource management job knowledge. Finally, in a stress interview, the interviewer seeks to make the applicant uncomfortable with occasionally rude questions. The aim is to spot sensitive applicants and those with low or high stress tolerance. If the applicant remains tranquil and maintains his composure, the interviewer might presume that he has a high tolerance for stress. So, interviews can vary on structure and content. They can also differ in the way they're administered, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or by a panel of interviewers, and sequentially or all at once. Most interviews are one-on-one -on -one and sequential. That is, the candidate meets with several people, one at a time and in sequence, before a decision is made. A panel interview, on the other hand, is conducted by a team of people who together interview each candidate and then combine their ratings into a final panel score. The panel format allows interviewers to ask follow-up questions, much as reporters do in press conferences, and may obtain more meaningful responses than a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews. Since the interview is only one of several selection tools, you may be wondering why we spend so much time learning about it. The reason is that the interview is the most widely used selection procedure. And although it's often criticized for its low validity, if done properly, an interview can be a good predictor of job performance. So, while not all employers use tests or even reference checks, it would be highly unusual for a manager not to interview someone before hiring him. That makes interviewing an indispensable management tool. That's the end of this section. Section 2, Practice Questions Okay, now that we've reviewed the chapter, let's see how much you've retained. I'll give you a series of multiple choice, true, false, and essay questions to think about. After a few seconds for each, I'll give you the correct answer and an explanation. Let's start with multiple choice. Ready? Question 1. Managers use several types of interviews in the work setting, including selection interviews, appraisal interviews, and A. Exit interviews, or B. Orientation interviews. The answer is A. When an employee leaves a firm for any reason, managers often conduct an exit interview aimed at obtaining information that might give the employer some insight into what's right or wrong about the firm. Question 2. To ask more consistent and job-relevant interview questions, you can base queries on actual job duties and A. Use subjective criteria to evaluate the interviewee's responses or B. Use multiple interviewers. The answer is B. Using multiple interviewers can reduce bias by diminishing the importance of one interviewer's personal opinions and by bringing in more points of view. Question 3. We can classify interviews according to content, structure, and A. Method of administration, or B. Questioning technique. The answer is A. Method of administration. Interviews can be administered either one-on-one -on -one or by a panel of interviewers, sequentially or all at once, and computerized or in-person. Question 4. Clever interviewees can manage the impression they present by using ingratiation tactics and A. Objectionary tactics or B. Self-promotion tactics. The answer is B. Interviewees can use self-promotion tactics by making complimentary comments about their own accomplishments. Okay, let's try a few true-false questions. Question 5. Structured interviews are more valid than unstructured interviews for predicting job performance. True or false? The answer is true. Structured interviews are more valid because they are more reliable, asking all interviewees the same questions. Question 6. 
First impressions are especially damaging when the prior information about the candidate is positive, true or false. The answer is false. Prior negative information is much more damaging than prior positive information. Question 7. Interviewers often let an applicant's attractiveness and gender distort their assessments. True or false? The answer is true. For example, people usually attribute more favorable traits and more successful life outcomes to attractive people. Question 8. Most interviews unearth the best candidate because the interviewer is usually well-prepared and well-trained. True or false? The answer is false. In fact, most interviews fail to find the best candidate because the interviewer is unprepared or overconfident or just plain lazy. How are you doing so far? Ready for some short essay questions? Okay, here's the first of two. Question 9. What factors may undermine an interview's usefulness? Several factors may undermine an interview's usefulness, including first impressions, misunderstanding of the job, candidate order, pressure to hire, personal characteristics, and interview behavior. Last one, question 10. What is the procedure for creating a structured situational interview? The procedure for creating a structured situational interview includes analyzing the job, rating the job's main duties, creating interview questions, creating benchmark answers, and appointing the interview panel and conducting the interview. That's the end of this section. Section 3, Key Terms Okay, now we'll review some of the chapter's key terms. I'll give you the term and pause a few seconds while you mentally define it and then I'll come back and state the definition. Ready? Question 1. What is an unstructured interview? An unstructured interview is a conversational-style interview in which the interviewer pursues points of interest as they come up in response to questions. Few, if any, questions are prepared in advance. Question 2. What is a situational interview? A situational interview is a series of job-related questions that focus on how the candidate would behave in a given situation. Question 3. Define behavioral interviews. Behavioral interviews include a series of job-related questions that focus on how the candidate has reacted to actual situations in the past. Question 4. What is a job-related interview? A job-related interview is a series of job-related questions that focus on relevant past job-related behaviors. Question 5. What is a stress interview? In a stress interview, the applicant is made uncomfortable by a series of often rude questions. Question 6. What is an unstructured sequential interview? An unstructured sequential interview is one in which each interviewer forms an independent opinion after asking different questions. Question 7. What is a panel interview? In a panel interview, a group of interviewers questions the applicant. Question 8. What is a mass interview? A mass interview is one in which a panel of interviewers interviews several candidates simultaneously. Question 9. Define candidate order error. Candidate order error is an error of judgment the interviewer makes based on interviewing one or more very good or very bad candidates just before the interview in question. Last one. Question 10. What is an appraisal interview? 
An appraisal interview is a discussion following a performance appraisal in which a supervisor and employee discuss the employee's rating and possible remedial actions. Well done. That's the end of this section. Section 4, Rapid Review Are you ready for the exam? Let's see. In this section, I'll give you a question and pause for just a few seconds before giving you the answer. Ready? Question 1. What is an interview? An interview is a procedure designed to obtain information from a person through oral responses to oral inquiries. Question 2. What is a selection interview? A selection interview is a selection procedure designed to predict future job performance on the basis of applicants' oral responses to oral inquiries. Question 3. What are the pros of the structured interview? In structured interviews, all interviewers generally ask all applicants the same questions, making these interviews more reliable and valid. Standardizing the administration of the interview also increases consistency across candidates, enhances job relatedness, reduces overall bias, and enhances the employer's ability to withstand legal challenge. Question 4. What are some things you can do, as an applicant, to gain an edge in an interview? To gain an edge in an interview, you must be prepared, uncover the interviewer's real needs, relate to those needs, think before answering, remember the importance of appearance and enthusiasm, make a good first impression, and ask questions. Question 5. What is a structured or directive interview? A structured or directive interview is an interview that follows a set sequence of questions. Question 6. What is a structured sequential interview? A structured sequential interview is an interview in which the applicant is interviewed sequentially by several persons. Each interviewer rates the applicant on a standard form. Question 7. Phone interviews may actually be more accurate than face-to-face -face interviews. True or false? The answer is true. Phone interviews can be more accurate than face-to-face -face interviews for judging an applicant's conscientiousness, intelligence, and interpersonal skills. Question 8. What is a computerized selection interview? A computerized selection interview obtains a candidate's oral and or computerized response to computerized oral, visual, or written questions and or situations. Question 9. What are three recommendations for adding to the validity and effectiveness of selection interviews? To add to the validity and effectiveness of selection interviews, interviews should be structured and interviewers should know what sorts of traits they are trying to assess and keep in mind the various factors that can undermine any interview's usefulness. Last one, question 10. Why is it important for the interviewer to take notes during the selection interview? The interviewer should take notes during the selection interview to help overcome the error of putting too much weight on the last few minutes of the interview. It may also help the interviewer avoid making a snap decision based on inadequate information early in the interview and jog their memory once the interview is complete. That's the end of this section. This concludes the Vango Notes for this chapter. We hope you found this audio review helpful. Be sure to check out other Vango Notes for textbooks published by Pearson Education. Audible hopes you have enjoyed.